a faithful relationship with God cannot be separated from our relationships with others. That seems to be a central meaning of these passages and the day of Pentecost, then and now. So I'll read that line again, and it comes from the Reverend James Forbes, Jr. A faithful relationship with God cannot be separated from our relationships with others. And now, folks, I'm going to explore two points based on that line and on these biblical readings for Pentecost. Point number one, our religion isn't meant to be purely private, purely personal, or purely individual. Christianity is meant for community. Point number two, and Christian community is created by the Holy Spirit to be radically open to all, despite differences. So on point number one, our religion is not meant to be purely private, personal, or individual. It is meant for community. When Jesus said goodbye, to his disciples here in John. He promised them that he would not leave them orphaned. He would not leave them by themselves. That he'd send his spirit, the Holy Spirit, or as Jesus called it, the advocate, to empower them to keep his movement and his mission and his vision for the world going. And here in this Acts passage, that advocate is delivered. Again, that's why the order. Jesus promises the advocate, and later in the book of Acts, he delivers on that promise. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit of Jesus arrives in Acts chapter 2. And what was the first work of the Holy Spirit in continuing the mission and vision of Jesus? What was the first primary goal? create community. The Holy Spirit filled that house of followers and empowered each of them to speak other languages so that they could go and connect with others more deeply and easily. And that moment, that moment is considered the birth of the church, the birth of Christianity. So Christianity, as we can see in the book of Acts, does not start with a personal, private moment of spirituality for individuals in isolation from one another. Rather, it starts as an immediate relational event. The speaking multiple languages moment wasn't a magic trick to impress us. It had a purpose to connect people together. And from there, It says, starting in verse 44, all who believed were together, and they had things in common. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home. They ate their food with glad and generous hearts. And not only were these first followers thrust into community with one another, they were thrust from private community into the public sphere. As it says, they went from some private upper room. And then a violent wind of the Spirit entered in, and it drove them out into the streets of Jerusalem to share with others. So, Christianity is neither a a purely personal and private faith, nor is Christianity a private club. These first acts of the Spirit and day of Pentecost prove it. So once more, our religion, point number one, 
isn't meant for purely private, personal, or individual. Christianity is meant for community. And that might seem like a really obvious point as you're all gathered here together as community. But we live in an extremely individualistic society. And I think our spirituality is under constant pressure to be privatized, to be hyper-individualistic, to only be about me. We tend to reduce our religion to only personal relationship with Jesus. Private devotion and individual expression. But here in the book of Acts, on that day of Pentecost, the Spirit seems to disallow the followers of Jesus from a purely private spiritual life. One biblical scholar, Walter Brueggemann, affirms, that which happens at Pentecost was no inner mystical experience for individuals, but it was an outpouring of God's energy into community for the world. So Christianity is fundamentally about community. I rest my case on point number one. Now on to point number two. Christian community is created by the Holy Spirit to be radically open to all despite differences. So friends, not only is faith and life together the intention of the Holy Spirit, it appears that said community is also intended to be wildly inclusive. Again, look at the passage. The Holy Spirit appears to be in the business of breaking down barriers so that more people can be included. In the passage, not just some, but all of them are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brought them face to face, not just with fellow people of Jerusalem, but people, quote, from every nation. The Holy Spirit sent them out not with just one language, but with all the languages of the people that they'd encounter. Furthermore, the community of the Holy Spirit, or that the Holy Spirit was forming, was made not just for Galilean Jews, but it says in verses 7 through 11, Quote, for residents of Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Asia, Egypt, Libya, visitors from Rome, Arabs. The Bible is showing us that Christian community transcends our human differences. Christian community transcends human barriers like language and national identity. That's what's happening here. And then you get Peter who stands up and has to preach on this event. And he gets up to preach on what just happened, and he quotes the prophet Joel to proclaim that the spirit of Jesus is to, quote, be for all flesh. And then later in chapter 10, Peter would have to practice what he just preached. And he, a Galilean Jew, or a Palestinian Jew, would welcome and reconcile with Cornelius, an Italian Gentile. The community that the Holy Spirit intends, starting here in the book of Acts, appears to be a wildly inclusive one. And to be sure, this trend of inclusivity, of including more and more people different from us, that's not just a feature of the book of Acts. Rather, being more and more inclusive and breaking down barriers between peoples is a trend of the entire Bible. A major trajectory of the Bible is one where God's people are to or learn to become more and more loving, welcoming, inclusive, and gracious of a community. Don't believe me? Here are a few examples. In Deuteronomy 23, it says in no uncertain terms that Moabites are bad. Don't include them. But then by the book of Ruth, Ruth, the Moabite, is the hero through whom God works. It says in Jeremiah 25 that people from Uz are not good, and they are to be viewed as such. 
But then by the book of Job. Job is a man from Uz, whom God calls blameless and upright. In 2 Kings 17, it says that the Samaritans are bad. They do not know the law of God. But in Jesus' most famous Good Samaritan people, Jesus impl- Good Samaritan parable, Jesus implies that sometimes Samaritans know the law better than his own followers. In Deuteronomy 23, it says that no foreigners and no eunuchs are allowed in the place of worship because the foreigner's non-Hebrew identity and because of the eunuch's bodily uniqueness. Not allowed. Then in Acts chapter 8, a foreign Ethiopian eunuch is welcomed wholeheartedly into the church. A major trend in the Bible is God forming God's people into a more and more inclusive, united, and welcoming community. So when we say here at First Lutheran Church, all are welcome, we are a part of that biblical trend, and we better mean it. My friends, this religion isn't just personal, private, and individual. It is meant for community. And this divinely ordained community isn't just for a select few. It is for all people. Even perhaps especially for the ones we're afraid to welcome. Such is the story of Scripture. Such is the work of Jesus. Such is the work of the Holy Spirit. Such is the work of church. Such is the theme of Pentecost. A faithful relationship with God cannot be separated from our relationships with others. Amen.